So you would notice all the objects. There is a last one is called time and date objects. So these objects is being used quite often within the communication. One is on startup. DMP3 network started up. The DMP3 master will send a timestamp record to slave. DMP3 message will be sent from the master to all the app stations. How to consider the delay as well? Okay, so before the master send a slave a time frame or time synchronization message, he will then send another message is called time delay message out. So I know the delay now. So 0.5 seconds. Now I'm gonna send a time and date now, deduct the 0.5 second. I'm gonna deduct, I'm gonna remove the delay. So when the, as soon as Oscar received the time and stamp, there's delay considered. If everything failed, if we all think that's gonna be, you know, not reliable, still not 100% reliable, especially in the power system industry, because electricity is moving in almost the speed of light, okay? So, so the common practice is put a time synchronization server or time clock at the master end, also at the slave end as well. So both of them synchronize the satellites. So they all, they all being synchronized with the same satellite clock. If you don't have, don't implement the satellite clock because that can be quite expensive, how can you make sure time is synchronized all the time? In the master stations, you can configure the master stations to how frequently you want to send the time synchronization to the slaves. You can send it, you can configure this to send it out every one second if you want to, but that might be overkill. From a slave side, you can ask, configure the slave to request time from the master however often you want it to. So the normal industry practice is we ask a slave to request the time every 24 hours, master to synchronize the time to slave with the slave every eight hours. So that would uh, minimize the bandwidth of the network as well to not creating too much traffic in out of time synchronization.